Welcome to Bison Overtime. I'm Alex Desky. I'm Malik Mitchell. We have a lot of NDSU sports to cover for you guys today, especially since a lot of spring sports are starting to wind down. We're going to start the show off talking about football. Um, NDSU played UNI last Saturday and won 23-20. to This is the first game that they played in, I think, three weeks due to COVID cancellation. So yep. the team was really great to be back on the field. What did you see from that game? Uh, Zeb Dolan completed eight passes out of 16 attempts, which is pretty it's average, average for him average. <laughs> okay but no picks no right? picks this game that's what he usually does with a total of 154 yards and one touchdown so not bad they were switching on and off between Zeb Nolan and freshman Cam Miller which is mm -hmm. something that we've seen several several weeks now and in the pro, uh, post game conference coach Enns was asked you know like is that the plan like do you plan on putting Cam in he's like no we just kind of feel it out um, do you think that's true? Like, do you think that they plan to put Cam in, or do you think it just, like, happens whenever? Um, I think it happens because Cam doesn't really have, like, enough stats to have that plan because if they plan mm -hmm. it, they want him to do something and get more, like, reps and, right. and more stats up on the board, like, actually throwing the ball. So that's why I think it's not really planned. I think if they just think, oh, let's put Cam in at this point, if they think, like, let's run the ball. Mm -hmm. Especially, yeah. like, when we're close, you yep. know, like, the first and goal type of yep. situations will yep. put him in. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the running game, um, Kobe Johnson, who got hurt, what, three weeks mm -hmm. ago now? is tentatively out for the season, and Phoenix Sproles is also out for the season. Mm -hmm. um, Hunter Lupke, who his first game back since October was against UND, had an outstanding game. I think, what, he had close to 200 mm -hmm. rushing yards? Mm -hmm. 19 carries for 95 yards. Still impressive for a running back, but not what he did before um, at the UND game. Do you think he was just tired, or were they just not handing him the ball as much? Well, I mean, 19 carries is still a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Different defensive schemes and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And it's like... You can't expect him to get that every single time. Right. And I'm kind of scared for him. The amount of carries he's get, like getting, I don't want him to get re-hurt. Right. That's, so, it's a lot for running right. backs. That's one of the most physical offensive positions you can be and in. And if they plan on doing that like for the rest of the games, he's going to really have to buckle down. But he is Mr. Truckster, you know, from the right. government summit. So I think he'll be fine. Looking forward, tomorrow the NDSU Bison play the SDSU Jackrabbits. They have not played since March 20th, which they won that game 44-3 to over Youngstown State. Um, coach Enns, I'm not going to say he sounded worried, but he was like, I know their coach, I know that team. They've been preparing for this game for a month now, just focusing on NDSU. What do you think is going to happen? How do you think that dynamic changes? Uh, it's definitely going to be a high competitive game because if you focus on a team for a month, you expect to beat them. There's right. no if ands. So... Nah, I can see why he's worried because, you know, like uh, Coach said, he said they've been like three different schemes. In 10 days. In 10 That's days, what the Bison right. had to do. So yeah. their mind is already off SDSU. Well, not now, but so it's definitely going to be hard, like a, a, probably a harder game for them. But I think NDSU will still take it. But do you think, although SDSU has, you know, technically had more time to prepare mm -hmm. against the Bison, mm -hmm. they still haven't played a game in close to a month now. Do you think the Bison have the upper hand that way? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, it didn't really affect us because right. we still were able to win saying. after yeah. the three weeks. I still think they have the upper hand. Like, they you think know, SDSU does? The SDSU does, of course. They have everything. They have to have everything planned on us. Our offense, our defense, a month? Yeah. That's a long time. And they're, you know, a 44-3 40, win over Youngstown State, who was our first um, home opponent this year that we struggled with to beat them. We did. Um, you know, and I think the Jackrabbits also beat Southern Illinois, who we mm -hmm. lost to. Who we to. lost to. But they lost to UND. Right, we who beat we them. beat. So we can't really. It's also hard to tell because UNI almost beat Youngstown State, almost beat SDSU, and I think almost beat Southern Illinois. Mm -hmm. And we kind of struggled close game. against yeah, them, it was close right? Game. It was close game. So it's kind of hard to tell. Um, what is your score prediction for tomorrow? Um, I think it'll be a close game, just like UNI. I would say. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Wait, what's your first position? I, I think know. it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be higher scoring, especially since high we are scoring? back home in the Fargo Dome. Well, not super high. I was thinking, you know, um, thirty-one twenty-eight Bison. I think it'll be really close. Thirty-eight twenty that high? Yeah, we normally like, have been scoring pretty high when we're at home compared to on the road, especially true. since 
this is Bison Nation's last home game of the season. I'm thinking like 21 14. Okay, I'm you're thinking, thinking pretty well. Yes, that close. Because, um, and then you think about Zeb Nolan and how he reacts at home. That's like true. he gets like stressed. That's how I'm thinking about. All right, before we head into commercial, it is important to note the postseason starts next Saturday because originally this weekend was supposed to be the bye yeah, week. And then we got um, I can't really find any details about what's going to happen other than we know that it starts next week and I think the championship is like May 15th. How far do you think the Bison are going to go in the playoffs? All the way. All the way? You're going to go to the championship All and win way. it? All the way. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I wish I could Dowdy? find more details on who they would play and when they play and where they play. Because until I have those details, I can't make a prediction. So in the Summer League, you think? I don't know. I don't FCS. know. I think we need more details before we can make predictions. Oh, wow. All right, when we come back, we'll be talking about Bison women's sports, softball, and soccer. Don't go away. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. kid deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry. Welcome back. Now we're going to talk about softball and soccer. So, softball had a great weekend. Mm -hmm. They almost swept USB last weekend, winning three out of the four games, but losing on the last day. Mm -hmm. So, on Saturday, Stephanie Sorrento had two hits and two runs. Madison Kamiko and Avery Wansong had two hits and one run. That first game took forever. <laughs> I honestly could not tell if both teams were equally good or equally bad because for every single batter, the pitcher for both teams, Bison and Coyotes, were throwing a full count. So every single batter went three to two. And so then either you you made it to first, so mm -hmm. you start all over, you walked them, still making it to first, mm -hmm. or you got an out. Mm -hmm. um, and we were able to win that game with a walk-off six to five win. Yep, and then the second game on Saturday, Kara Betty had three hits and one run. Montana Dickamp and Cameron Maycutt had one hit and one run. And the important thing to know about this game, which we won three to nothing, is that sophomore pitcher Lainey Lyle had a no-hitter, which is super impressive Pretty because impressive. the Coyotes were, they were out for blood, but you won't really see their, their um, hard work pay off to yeah, that fourth game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so on Sunday, uh, as you can see the hype up video for the softball, but on Sunday, Montana DeCamp had three hits and one run. Nicole Lucia and Des Cardenas had one hit and one run. Then the Bison won that game three to one. And so then the second game on Sunday, also it's important to note that all four of these games were back to back double hitters, two on Saturday, two on Sunday. Yep. So the fourth game, which we lost five to six, that's when USD really came out. Yep. They were, I don't know, the softball teams, something that I wasn't aware of is how they chant for every single pitch, uh, yeah. every single hitter. Mm -hmm. And they were coming up with new ones. Mm -hmm. We could hear it, you know, um, Koi and I were working in the trailer. We could hear it. We could hear it on the other side of the field. And I could tell that that was kind of getting to the bison. Although we had our chance too, mm -hmm. 
they were just so loud, loud. and they were banging on the cages and mm -hmm. it was crazy. Well, they needed a win, but now we are now uh, 12 and 20 overall right. and 7 and 5 in the conference. Their next game is against Iowa State today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Today's game got canceled. Today's got canceled. Yes, okay. because um, this is hearsay, so I cannot confirm this is not an NDSU athletics official statement. Mm -hmm. Iowa State had someone test positive. Mm. It was a false positive. False. But for some reason, girls are still having to quarantine. And so Iowa State only had two eligible pitchers. So that's why they're just going to play that one game on Saturday and one game on Sunday. Okay. Iowa State is sixth in the Big 12. This is a non-conference game. Mm -hmm. um, and that's hard to say. Iowa State is 23-16 and 16 overall because they're playing non-conference yeah. games. But then they switched to the Big 12 mm -hmm. and are on an eight-game losing streak. Yeah, but they're still a tough opponent because they're in a different, uh, well, I could say a better conference. Right, Big 12, are. you know, with... OU, OSU, those are the typical, you know, big softball mm -hmm. um, competitors, and then like nationally. Yeah. Um, the other thing to note is that you, we, last week, you know, we were kind of talking about okay, NDSU softball normally does well. Mm -hmm. They were struggling, but now that we're in the conference play, winning three of the four games, mm -hmm. do you think that we were just out? out of our league playing yeah, those non-conference games? Yeah, and games? now we're about to go back into that again with Iowa State. But all we can do is try to hold our own and execute. That's literally all we can do. This I time. think it does help being at home, too. Yeah. All right, switching now to soccer. The team finished their season last weekend. I do not believe that they made it into the postseason. Um, they played the ORU Golden Eagles. The first game ended in a double overtime draw. What did you see from that game? Jess Hanley and Olivia Lavik had one goal and on, uh, on Sunday. They won three to one mm -hmm. against uh, Oral Roberts, and then Olivia Lavic, Calio Kelsey, and Aaliyah Owens, two new names, had one goal. So the Bison finished their season seven, eight, and one overall, only playing Summit League opponents. So do you think if they would have played more non-conference games, that record could have been higher? I think it would have been worse. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because if, if you're playing like 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 softball, if you're playing better opponents in a different league than. You know, I think this is what we should stay in, and mm -hmm. we need to get better so we can win in our conference. What do you it think? is a part, uh, important to note that, you know, the two names that we've talked about a lot, Olivia Lovick and Jess Hanley, are freshmen. Yep. And both of those girls were named to the Summit League All-Newcomer team. Um, overall, Lovick had six goals in the season. She was also the team leader in points with mm -hmm. 14 points in the season. Impressive for a freshman, but that also shows how young this team is. It is yeah, right. um, Hanley finished the year with two, goal, two goals and five assists, tying the team lead in assists. Yep, and Kelsey Calio led the team in assists. So what do you think, um, looking forward, we should expect to see from this Bison soccer team? Um, I think the well, next year the sophomore class will mm -hmm. be solid, well, more experienced than they were, and hopefully they can turn that 7-8 to uh, like better. You know. We talked about this with volleyball, too. They're typically a fall season. Mm -hmm. How do you think, you know, finishing, what is it, April now? Then having to start again mid-August, early September, how do you think the girls are going to handle that? Well, I think they'll still be in shape, so mm -hmm. they won't be rusty. That's true. Or, yeah, they won't be rusty or anything, so I think they'll be good. All right. Sounds good. All right, oh. when we come back, <laughs> we'll talk about baseball and golf. Stay with us. <laughs> Technology Learning and Media Center, located in the Quinton Burdick Building, Room 150C, provides a variety of services to assist you with all of your technology-related coursework and personal learning goals. The TLMC offers one-on-one -on -one tutoring and assistance in topics ranging from basic computer skills to advanced topics such as design, Adobe products, and multimedia software. A resource library that includes books on the latest software releases, Online resources including a lynda.com kiosk that provide free access to high quality video tutorials on hundreds of topics. Free workshops on a variety of topics taught each semester by our student staff. Software and hardware for audio and video capture, conversion, and editing, plus personal assistance on your multimedia projects. Multiple scanners are available at the TLMC, including one large format scanner and a slide and film scanner. The Wacom tablet provides ultimate control in your favorite graphics and illustration software and can help you to create stunning digital artwork. 
Large format poster printing is also done at the TLMC. Our walk-in media resources include the Whisper Room sound booth for recording professional quality voiceovers and audio. The TLMC Media Studio is available by reservation and provides equipment and space for video recording, audio recording, studio photography, screen capture, and a green screen for special effects. If you have any questions on these services, be sure to visit the TLMC website, and while you're there you can check out a variety of learning and media resources, or just stop by the next time you're in the Quinton Burdick building and check out what we have to offer. Welcome back. Now we're going to dive into baseball and golf. So baseball had a, a solid weekend. Mm -hmm. They made a four-game sweep yep. over Western Illinois. Yep. They won uh, Friday. They won 2-0. to zero. Jake Malik had two hits and one run. Mm -hmm. And Jake Simmonson had one hit and one run. And Yeah, one run. So the second game on Friday, they won 10-7. to seven. Right. So And that one was a doubleheader with a third game shortly after, which they won 6-3. to three. Yep. Garrett Hill had two hits and three runs. Jake Malik had three hits and two runs. And Peter Brookshaw had... Three hits and one run. So good stats that game. The fourth game was wild. It went to 14 innings, which is basically unheard of in the MLB, but especially in college. Um, Bison were down in the fourth inning. Here is the, I believe this is the game the winning. The game winning goal? Uh, um, oh, no, run? this is the tying run. run. The Bison were down, and I think Charlie Hesse scores to tie it in the ninth to force extra innings. And then this is Kalen Schwab. He hit a single to get the walk-off win and the weekend sweep for the team. Got it. And you can see how excited, how excited they, are they are to win that game. You know, and you were there, weren't you? Yeah. It oh, went, it, how long did that game take? It took like four hours. <laughs> I, first baseball game I've ever went to, and it went that long. But I learned a lot. It was It's actually fun. But, yeah, 14 innings. I heard, like, something that haven't happened since 2011 or so, some <gasps> old thing like that. It was crazy. But so, uh, Zach Salento had... <laughs> <laughs> two hits and two runs. Uh, Jake Malik and Bennett Hostetler, Tucker Road had one hit and one run. There was a lot of people, new names on that team that right, had hits and runs, too. Right, I was thinking about that, too. too. So it you was, just named off, like, um, mm -hmm. we've heard Jake Malik and Bennett yeah. pretty frequently. Mm -hmm. Did um, Peter Brookshaw do anything in this weekend series? Um, He didn't do that much. I heard, like, he had, no, Bennett Hostetler is having, like, a cold week, weekend. Oh. Yeah, that's what I heard. But. Well, um, so those, I think all those, those three guys are all juniors, I think maybe a sophomore. Um, freshman Cade Feeney, or Fenny, I'm not quite sure, was named the Summit League Pitcher of the Week. So that was pretty impressive, and he, but he shared the honor with ORU's Isaac Coffey, who struck out 12 batters in a complete game against Houston Baptist. This is important because we play ORU this weekend. And the SU is 22 and 8 overall, 11 and 5 in the conference. O ORU is 14 and 17 overall, 5 and 3 in the conference. Doubleheader starts today at 3. What do you think is going to happen? Well, Oral Roberts is number two in the Summer League, so it's you know definitely going to be number one. Oh, okay. Number one, but it's still going to be a tough game. <laughs> right. So I think it should, be, it should be an exciting game. Hopefully, it's not as long as 14 innings again, but it definitely probably should be a high scoring game. Well, it depends. If the pitcher is really good, right, right. then we, it won't be a high-scoring grade, correct? Um, if our pitcher is really good, <laughs> then that means the opponent <laughs> won't score. Yes. But if their pitcher is really good, which <laughs> both of our pitchers were just named Pitcher of the Week. Yeah. Exactly. So I expect to see a high-scoring game. No, a low-scoring game. Low-scoring game. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So moving on to golf, the men's and women's golf team had a meet in Nebraska Monday and Tuesday. Yes. Uh, for the men's sophomore, Jed I can't pronounce his last name. And Nate Diesel finished eighth, uh, tied for eighth. Mm -hmm. And then freshman Brock Winter uh, finished with 11th with uh, 224 points. Uh, freshman Nate Adams finished 15th overall. And freshman Jack Johnson finished 20th, which is rare. He's usually right. higher. He's normally top up. But right. also, take a look. You just named off, what, three, four sophomores and mm -hmm. two sophomores. Two freshmen. Two, four freshmen and two sophomores. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty young guys. I know. You know, and you, I think, um, what did Lucas Johnson do this weekend? He uh, tied for a 23rd. He okay. shot uh, 234 points. So these underclassmen are mm -hmm. out shooting the upperclassmen, which I think is pretty important, you know, going into the future of the Bison Golf Program. Mm -hmm. um, the men won. It was the Stampede at the Creek in Elkhorn, Nebraska. The men won first. The women's team got sixth overall. What did you see from the girls? So Taylor McCordo and sophomore Maddie Henzog finished 18th. The women's didn't do that well as men, right. 
but senior Which Alexis. Is that we've seen. We've yeah, seen in the last yeah. couple weeks. Uh, senior Alexis Thomas finished 26th overall. Um, freshman Leah Scar finished 34th overall. And junior Lexi Gallet finished 37th overall. So it's it wasn't really right. a good and, meet for but them. But that one's also, you know, junior, senior, sophomores. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of Bad. kind of frustrating. Yeah. But I know that there are a lot of sophomores who or freshmen who just like haven't really gotten that much experience. Mm -hmm. Looking forward, both teams um, next meet to the Summit League tournament. The women compete next weekend. It's April 24th to the 26th. The men have two weeks off before they compete um, May 1st through the 3rd. How do you think that's going to turn out for both teams? I think the men's are going to do well. Jack Johnson hopefully has a better uh, tournament than what he did mm -hmm. th uh, last week. But the girls, I don't know. I don't really have – the girls kind of been struggling. What do you think – how do you think your girls are going to do? Yeah, I – I don't know. I think this might be like their last push, like the last hurrah, like, okay, girls, like, let's do it. This is the last thing. Or they're just tired. You know, they've been playing, I think, consistently every week for at least the last five weeks. Mm -hmm. But then the men are not going to have two weeks off. Do you think that's going to make them at least a little rusty? Or do you think that doesn't really impact golf as much? I don't think it impacts golf that much. Plus, I think they get to have rest and just, you know, train a little bit uh, longer. Because they don't really have rest, do they? Like, I don't they've been think going so. back to back, yeah. right? So I don't think it'll affect them too much. So, so something that we will have to um, recap for you guys yeah. during our dead week, right yeah, before yeah, finals. Yeah, right before finals. But when we come back, we'll dive into track and field and go back to basketball. Right, got with some updates with Yeah, that. with some recruiting. So don't leave. There are so <laughs> many great things to experience at NDSU. It's hard to pick one. But my favorite is the people. They make it such a warm place. The Bison aren't just across the country. They're across the globe. It's the perfect distance from home. The faculty are our biggest cheerleaders hands-on research experience, the affordable tuition, all the opportunities to stay active on campus, real-world learning experiences. Once I got on campus, it felt like home. The NDSU Bookstore has everything you need to show off your bison pride. The bookstore can have you sporting green and gold wherever you go. It offers many different brands, sizes, styles, and selection so that you find exactly what you're looking for. Shop the NDSU Bookstore and show your spirit today. No kid deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry. There are so many great things to experience at NDSU. It's hard to pick one, but my favorite is the people. They make it such a warm place. The bison aren't just across the country, they're across the globe. It's the perfect distance from home. The faculty are our biggest cheerleaders. Hands-on research experience. The affordable tuition. All the opportunities to stay active on campus. Real-world learning experiences. Once I got on campus, it felt like home. All right, welcome back to the last segment of Bison Overtime for the day. We have a lot to talk about with track and field, who had a great weekend at the Tennessee Relays last week. Starting off with the women's team, Kendra Kelly, Alyssa Lind, Grace Zimmerman, and Nell Graham brought home first place in the 1,600-meter sprint medley relay. And then Alacia Freetley, Peyton Frolic, who's someone we've talked about a lot, Katie Bai, and Kalisa Houston um, ran the distance medley and got the ninth fastest in NDSU outdoor history. And the team finished third in the meet. What did the men do? Yep, and Alex Talley placed second in hammer throw, ranking 18th in the NCAA this season. Mm -hmm. um, sophomore um, Benji Phillips won the Javelin title. Uh, he currently ranks 12th in NCAA this season. You got some more updates? So the women's team is now ranked 16th in the nation as a team, which is pretty impressive. Also kind of surprising since I didn't see the men ranked yet, which I think we've kind of talked more about the men's team as like team events rather than the females having, you know, with Akili Moten and Jenny yep. Bargar Patrash having individual things. So I just kind of thought that was surprising. Yep. And then Brandon Lewis got second in the launch up. He's been really doing good in the launch up. I think he won the indoor. 
I think uh, so, championship. Yeah, earlier yep. this semester. And he's ranking fifth in NDSU outdoor history. Another record another <laughs> being broken. But um, Alex Talley, my guy, right. was second. And we actually second, uh, third, and fourth. Yeah, uh, Christoph uh, Thompson got third. And then Mac Maxwell Otterdahl was fourth in shot put. Right, and we've talked about Max as well. I think mm -hmm. he's a freshman. Yep. Um, some of our stats from the men, Isaac Huber, Kaiser Fretley, Jacob Hanna, and Alex Bartholomew won the distance medley for the men, ranked seventh all-time in NDSU, and then Alex Brosaw, Darian Lipscomb, Jacob Roden, and Josh Salmon teamed up and took first place in the 1600 sprint medley. So both men and women won the 1600 sprint, and mm -hmm. then... Um, men won the distance, and I think women got the second place. It's good to see it balance. Like, isn't it sometimes like? Yeah, you like know, it's nice to see that both, of, yeah. both teams are doing well, especially mm -hmm. since you know we saw them do great in indoor. Yep. That they're taking this to the outdoor, and their recognition is paying off because Jenny Bargar Patash and Maddie Nils were named the Summit League Track and Field Athletes of the Week. Um, Jenny registered a personal best by 22 seconds in the 5,000 meter. Um, it's the second fastest 5,000 meter in NDSU history, trailing only Olympian Aaron Teshuk and is now ranked 13th on the national performance list for the outdoor season. How cool is that that she's second behind an Olympian? That's really good. It's, oh, she can probably pass her in the future. <laughs> All she has to do is put in the work and keep doing what she's been doing. And then Maddie Nils extended her school record in the hammer throw by nearly four feet. Not just a couple inches. She threw it four feet further. <laughs> um, she's now the top collegiate finisher in that meet last weekend and is third in the NCAA um, this season. Mm -hmm. Where are they going to be at next week? They will compete at the MSUM right next door, Dragon Twilight in Moorhead, Minnesota. It starts next Thursday. You like that name, don't you? It's kind of fun, Dragon <laughs> Twilight. <laughs> All right, switching now for the last segment, basketball. It was signing day, I think it was, I think Wednesday for both the men's and the women's. The men's team picked up two new players, both transfers, Andrew Kalman from Northern State University and Willie Guy from the Des, Mo Des Moines Area Community College. What do you think those additions are going to do for the team? Well, Willie Guy is a six-foot guard, so he's probably going to have problems because there's a bunch of guards already there. <laughs> yeah. And two that barely play, like Bowden, he got hurt. Mm -hmm. He's He was a guard that's a freshman, so he's going to have some competition, I'm not going to lie. On the women's team, we add one new girl to the um, – there are already four girls, I think, in the recruiting class, and it's Gabby Ford from Ontario. How do you think the women's team shaping up to look? Well, like the coach said, they like that uh, recruit. Uh, six three, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So she's definitely gonna do some damage. Who, uh, Emily uh, Dietz. Yes. She's gonna add them with her. I know that coach was saying, especially when we played SDSU and USC, that we just didn't have the height. Mm -hmm. so I think he's really excited about yeah, that. Yeah. Now we have one. And then they added Ellie uh, Dag, a five ten guard from Minnesota. And wait, we have a lot of guards too, don't we? Yes. So I think there's a lot. You know, Katie Hildebrandt. Abby Kubis and Sophie Olson were already, um, in addition to Ellie, the four girls that I think they signed in the fall mm -hmm. um, or early January. I can't really remember when mm -hmm. that signing day was. So both teams are really excited about all their new recruits and a lot to look forward to this winter season. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to Vice and Overtime today. I'm Alex Desky. I'm Malik Mitchell. Make sure to tune in next week to hear more updates on all of your NDSU sports. Have a great weekend.